Oh, look. Should I start talking? So I love this thing. It's great big tall poles. I mean, that's what gives it all its look. And this is straight out of one of my paintings. It's like a science fiction scene. That would be the ship coming in. And so often when I do a painting, there's the foreground of it. Of it thing. And in fact, I'll almost certainly do a painting based on this. The great big tall gaunt structure in the foreground and then the ship coming in like that. And for me, it's got so much a spaceship -y look. It's got the long bridge, which I use a lot. It's got the slope down towards the bows. And then just look now, the line of the ship lines up with the horizon. Do you see the yellow bit was exactly in the sea and the white bit was exactly in the sky. So in fact, that's a combination I would avoid. I would avoid a conflict between the horizon and the ship. And here it is getting larger. And then again, it would make a nice painting, this great, strange obelisk, set of obelisks like that. So, of course, thinking about it now, where the crane is, I would have a statue. Maybe it's a huge statue on a platform, ready to be transported somewhere. And here is just a working spaceship coming in. It's so out of one of my pictures. And then the tower there with the lights. It really is so evocative. And of course, what will be interesting is over there is where they're going to have a concrete works. And that will be huge. And that will belch smoke and all sorts of things. It uses up a huge amount of energy. And so things like this ship will be warped against it. But then, going back again to the ship, look, it's got the bridge, which is straight out of one of my painting. It's got the slope down to the bow, then it's got the line, which is still in line with the horizon, and then it's got the hull underneath. So for me, all I would do is replace the yellow hull with some rockets facing forward, some machinery, you put some fins on it, and you've got a ready-made spaceship. And then, of course, you've got the tower in the foreground with the lights, so that's very good. That gives a sort of clear indication of something and so the whole scene is so right so going again back to this just imagine a huge statue up there in that you know and here is the incoming vessel just very mundane and then in one of my paintings there would be other spaceships waiting to come in maybe this is the main taxiway and so they would line up and come in and then because it's quite big you do get a feeling a sort of slow majesty you know it's very large so it doesn't move it doesn't bob with the waves and it's just got this inexorable progress forward and now of course it's all silhouetted against those lights so again it gives you the perspective and then of course you've got this lovely perspective of the channel and the ship coming in the channel and that slow railway that's so evocative it's absolutely magnificent. And then you've got the receding perspective of the decks. Then you've got the lettering. So it is terrifically evocative. Oh look, and then suddenly you get a flight of birds. That's something I don't put in paintings, maybe I should. Look at the birds all going around the ship. I should think of straight birds on a planet. the water moves with the bow and it goes to fit underneath. That is very impressive. Yes, look how the bow is pushing the water.
half a wild open bit there and uh, if it's going to be a full concrete works that it would be work massive and it will be built in smoke concrete works consume vast amounts of energy so um, but on the other hand it does make sense because you've got all the chalk in the hills inland you've got the ocean here so the stuff could be exported so sadly it probably makes a lot of economic sense because that land is not earning a living as such but for people who live down here it, it is earning a living in the sense that it's somewhere to give respite you know i respite to so there we go.